Design in 2009, I can just see you turning up your noise and saying, well, there's a young and fresher meat out there. Still, what a head tin. Welcome to Jaguar XJ50, ladies and gentlemen. A lot less popular than the Germans, the likes of BMW 7 Series, Mercedes-Benz S-Class, but this is not why they turn their heads. It's because of this slender, striking body gliding through the streets. Here, the size does matter, 5.1 meters, simply because it makes this car look very elegant. There's a standard and long wheelbase. Today, I've got the short one, but that's okay. It looks still pretty stunning. Let's hop in and see what the Jaguar XJ is all about. I must say, I do love Jack for simply not messing around and putting a proper 3-litre V6 turbocharged diesel engine under the bonnet of this car. Now, this engine goes back to the cooperation between Ford and the PSA group, but here it is actually a good thing, simply because its manners are impeccable. Now, it pumps 300 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque 0 to 100 is only 6.2 seconds not only are its manners impeccable this engine is very smart in terms of fuel economy considering my heavy right foot a combination of city motorway mountain driving all i'm using is seven liters which is 34 miles to the gallon for my american friends how about that well d4 simply diesel power <laughs> We've got an excellent 8-speed automatic transmission. It knows exactly when it's time to chop down the gears and the change is velvety. You simply do not notice it at all. But let's pop you into dynamic mode and see what you made of XJ. Straight away it sharpens its senses and you really feel this sporty Jaguar soul here and this is something I absolutely love and appreciate. But it doesn't mean that there's any room for sort of hiccups or pulls, not at all, it wouldn't be appropriate, would it? The gearbox is very quick because it certainly can keep up with my heavy right foot. Straight away what happens, you get some more weight to the steering wheel and it becomes quite sharp and precise. It is actually not too bad to start with in the comfort mode. Surprisingly, it is very sort of responsive. Now the suspension, as you would expect, it is superb. It absorbs all of the bumps and imperfections because after all, it is one of the perfect limousines out there. Now onto the cabin. Personally, I love it. You see how the front is rounded? It adds so much flavor, so much class to this car. Now the cabin's a little bit smaller than the German competitors, but it doesn't mean there isn't enough space. In fact, there is plenty. Beautiful quality of the materials and finish. I just feel that this cabin represents this old glamorous Jaguar style, which I absolutely love, but sadly it is missing from all of the younger Jaguar models. Well, anyway, seat massage and we are ready to go. So what happens when you accelerate in this car? Well, you certainly feel that you've got something serious under the bonnet and the V6 engine, well, it does its work. And although this car can be very quick, this sort of crazy bonanza I'm doing now is not its ideal environment. It's not exactly its cup of tea because all of the power, 700 newton meters of torque is being sent to the rear wheels. Now on a slippery road with this hair color, it can certainly get quite interesting. I, I do feel a 4x4 system would be very useful here. Unfortunately, it is not available. But then again, it is a noble limousine and the best you're going to get out of this car is certainly during calm and chilled, relaxed drive. None of this crazy bonanza, prominent lack of class I am representing today, unfortunately, no. Just take it easy in this car. And to be a passenger in the XJ, well, what can I say? Living life, ladies and gentlemen. Both of my seats are adjusted for my height, which is 1.7 meters, 5.6. Lots of leg room, lots of head room, seat cooling, seat heating, all of these gimmicks. I am simply feeling majestic. 
it wouldn't be a video without discussing the financials, would it? So, the standard wheelbase, which is the model I have with me today, in Switzerland is worth just under 100,000 Swiss francs, which is more or less an equivalent to the US dollar. We only have the V6 uh, diesel engine available here. Interestingly enough, in America, you have two engines to select from. There's a V6, which pumps 340 horsepower. That is worth only 76,000. There's also a glorious V8, which pumps a whopping 470 horsepower. And it is worth only 94,000. Well, talk about life being unfair. Us poor peasants in Europe, we do enjoy paying a little bit more for our cars, don't we? <laughs> And on this pricey note, let's get this party wrapped up, shall we? What are my final thoughts on this car? You see, what Jaguar proves with the XJ is that you do not need an army of advanced safety systems, self-parking and all of these super complicated technology to just make you feel very special. And let's be honest, we're not there yet with these advanced safety systems, are we? And very often we just get agitated because we do not get what we've paid for. What you do get with the XJ, however, is beautiful looks, great performance, lushness and lavishness, this comfort out of this world. It is quiet, relaxing, a beautiful car to do long distance journeys. Because of course, the cherry and the cake is this wonderful fuel economy. I mean, 2,400 kilograms to push, seven liters is all I'm using. Pretty wonderful if you ask me. Am I going to complain? No, of course not. I've got a soft spot for Jaguar. And you tell me, what is there to complain about? Not much. I bet that. So, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And simply, I feel a bit like a Queen of England driving this car. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.